In Space Engineers, you can create ships and stations, but you can also convert a ship to a station and a station to a ship. But what's the difference? And what does this really do? And there's also a game setting you can change called Unsupported Stations. What does that do? Why would I want or need to do any of these things? Should I do these things? Is any of this cheating? I'm going to talk about all that right now. This video was actually spawned from a couple comments I received on some prior videos with me talking about this space station build and the challenges with building it in the free-floating weightlessness of space. I get a fair number of topic ideas from the channel's comments, so keep them coming. For this playthrough, I actually wanted that more realistic space sim of weightlessness and natural inertia movement. But it begs the question, do I have to? Can I lock my space station's grid in space without it being attached to an asteroid, moon, or planet? And how do I do that? Should I do that? Well, to answer those questions, I'm going to talk about two game features, or options, however you want to view them. I've made a copy of the space station, the whole playthrough in fact, in a separate save file to demonstrate these things. And first, I'm going to talk about the option to convert ships to stations and convert stations to ships. This whole space station is one grid, including my mothership that has thrusters, gyroscopes, and all that. I used a merge block to fuse them together while the space station is under construction to help hold it in place as I occasionally push against it with my automated welding drone or bump it around landing and taking off with my miner and anything else that might nudge it around. It does still move around a little bit, but for now, I'm using my mothership's thrusters and gyros to stabilize everything and hold it in place as much as possible. But I don't have to. There's an info tab on every grid, and you'll see an option in the bottom right to either convert ships to a station or convert a station to a ship. Right now, my whole space station is considered a ship and I do plan to move it around in space from planet to planet while I explore. If I hit the thrusters, it starts to move in any direction, and you can see that relative to the little wall builder drone hovering in space in front. No problem, the thing moves. But if I click this box and convert the ship to a station, see what happens. Now that it's a station, if I hit the thrusters, it does not move. It's locked into space. You can also see that before I converted it to a station, the meter that shows movement speed was ever so slightly twitching a little, right in the one to two hundredth of a meter per second range. After making it a station, it's rock steady, no movement at all. This demonstrates why you'll hear people saying that a station is easier on the game's performance and simulation. As a station, it doesn't even have to think about movement and recalculating if there is thrust relative to the mass of the ship and all that. It's just locked in, period. I'm going to come back and talk more about that in a minute. But first, let me talk about that other unsupported station's game setting and what that's about and how it kind of dovetails with this grid-based conversion setting. To demonstrate this, I'm going to do a little movie magic teleport to the Earth-like planet surface and go to my Ice Lake charging base you might recognize from earlier in the series. This is where I built the mothership and took off for space. I'm also going to enable creative tools so I can place some blocks, but again, this is just to demonstrate these features. This isn't part of the playthrough. I'm going to place a few blocks off to the side of the base, which the game identifies as a station. And with unsupported stations turned off, which is the default, you can see what happens. When I grind off a block, the block falls to the ground like we'd expect in gravity. Now I'm going to build back that same set of blocks, but with unsupported stations turned on. When I grind off the block, you can see what happens. The rest of the blocks just stay hovering in place. It's an unsupported station. It was part of a station before, and it's still part of a station now. 
It's just its own station with four light armor blocks and a control panel. And we can see that if we look into its info through the control panel. If I change it now to a ship, it just drops to the ground. It's no longer a station, so it's not falling into that unsupported station game logic. But it also has no thrusters, so it just plummets down to the ground, like you'd expect any ship to do without an engine. So, unsupported stations might could be viewed as an ignore gravity for stations button. But this ignore gravity concept isn't entirely true either. There's another little interesting thing going on here, and more we can do. If I recreate this unsupported station block, and now add some thrusters and separate it from the main station grid, it still just hangs there as an unsupported station. When I turn on the thrusters, it doesn't move, just like we saw in space with the space station. However, if I convert the now unsupported station to a ship, the engines kick on and it gets held in the air by its thrusters. And I can move it around. It's a ship. The fun still isn't over though. I can reposition this grid anywhere I like, and when I convert this ship back to a station on the info screen, it locks it in place because I have unsupported stations enabled. So, how would you use this? Well, there's probably a lot of use cases for sure, but I can see building a station attached to the ground, then wanting to maybe fly it up and position it as a hovering city in the sky over top of some mountains, or maybe move it up into a low orbit, not fully in space, some sort of thing like that. Now, with unsupported stations enabled, what you can't do is just place a block in midair and expect it to hover there. Some of you are probably thinking that already. No, it'll just fall to the ground like any other block. And you can see that when I place a control panel and open up the info screen on one of those fallen blocks, it currently thinks it's a ship because I created it in mid-air, rather than starting it attached to the ground or something else that thinks it's a station. I can even take my floating, unsupported station, and it is a true station now, not a ship, build off it with some blocks, separate a piece, and the piece is also a station, and also unsupported because of the game setting. I previously described the unsupported stations as a defy gravity for stations setting, but I think a more accurate description of what's really happening is that stations are always locked in place and aren't impacted by any movement physics. The unsupported stations setting changes this behavior when a piece of a station is removed. Rather than changing a disconnected block from a station to a ship, it keeps its original state of a station, and just by default, locks that piece in space, immune from movement physics. If unsupported stations is not enabled, which is the game's default again, the little bits are immediately converted to ships when they are detached. We witness this same thing when you build a ship initially attached to your base or to the ground, then grind it free. Or when your base gets attacked and there's an explosion and little bits go flying. You can see here when it's not enabled and I create a little bit of destruction to break a piece off, the separated piece falls to the ground. And with the control panel, it tells me it's now a ship, which is different than if unsupported stations is enabled. The broken off bits are still stations, unsupported and just hanging in the air. Would I ever want to have unsupported stations? Well, maybe, if I want that floating cloud city, but I'd have to accept some rather unrealistic physics around broken off pieces and some other peculiarities. But I can see a server with a special playthrough using it. But what about the convert ships to stations and vice versa? There is definitely a more utilitarian use for that. And as I started out, I could have used that for my space station to make the building easier. Is converting ships to stations and vice versa a cheat? Well, that one probably depends on whether you're just 
toggling a grid back and forth between a ship and station to circumvent some sort of game challenge, or whether it's an intended part of a plan, like building a thing on the ground, flying it into space, and locking it into place to make it at least semi-permanent and save some server resources. For me, I'm planning on moving my space station around, kind of like Deep Space Nine, and I'm building it in space. So converting it to a station just to keep it steady and reduce the game's challenges doesn't feel right. Like and subscribe if this video helped explain a lot more about stations, ships, converting to each state, and that mysterious unsupported stations game setting, which is curious. See you in the next Space Engineers episode.